So why do we go to church? Why do we participate in church? Why are we part of this thing called the body of Christ at First Presbyterian? Well, the short answer is because Jesus calls us to. In Matthew 28, it says, Go forth into all the world, uh, making disciples, baptizing, teaching, and lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. So we go to church because we're commanded to go to church. We engage in mission, we teach, we worship because Christ calls us to. But the fuller answer is even more exciting. In the process of participating, in this thing we call church at First Presbyterian, we actually get a chance to touch God and to be touched by God. And so this year, we are looking at and listening to stories about people in mission, people in teaching, people in worship, and all the different ways that they have been touched, that we have been touched by God through First Presbyterian Church. So. Listen to these stories and remember at the very end of that great commission is the word, Lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Listen and hear how we've been touched by God in the ministry and the mission that we experience here at First Presbyterian Church. I've always believed in God, um, but from the first time I came here I felt Him. Um, I see them in the people. I'm a sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, their smiles and just the things that they do. Um, you can just feel them, even in them, and see them. Him in their smiles and their faces. They're happy to see you. When I see them out in the community, they smile. They say hi, and it's every Sunday is kind of like coming home. Um, I'm amazed at the kids because they're just as involved as the adults. And, and they enjoy it. And they're doing it because they want to, not because they think it's something they have to do. Just like the people here, I just think everyone is wonderful. Well, that was the best thing I ever did coming here. And it's changed my life just because, I think a lot of people think that God's gone, but when, like I said, you can see him here. He's here and he's working through everybody. And it's the first church that I've been to where it is, it's just like going home. So much of what we do here uh, is reaching out to folks who uh, are often left behind, uh, often uh, are not able to um, find ways to, to make it on their own because of the circumstances of their lives. And so we seek to reach out. Uh, we seek to be faithful to Christ's command to us uh, in the scriptures to, to go out into all the world and to express our faith in actions. I've taken uh, over 50 members of this congregation to Peru with me along with others from our community and presbytery and I can honestly say that there's not a single person who has gone who hasn't returned from the trip saying that they were blessed by the trip, saying that they had received so much more than they were able to, to give to those that we were with uh, and serving with. We go uh, with the intention of serving and helping, but what happens in the midst of that is that we who go from here receive so much uh, in the relationships that we build with the people there. My trip to Peru, uh, mission trip, was completely unbelievable. It was refreshing, it was um, Completely invigorating. Uh, the apparent beauty of Peru was my first impression of, of what God is capable of and, and beauty in the land and the people and the relationships that you build. God, God has done a lot for us. He let me have a house. Yes. He helped me to do everything we had him for. We get it. There's nothing more we can ask we can, for. Yeah, we can ask nothing more. He's so good to us. Uh -huh. Yes, and we love God every day. Every day. And our church family is good. The people at Habitat is good. Everybody is good. Kind. Don't leave kind. <laughs> Watching the, the volunteers, the, the partner families, 
all the hard work that they put into these homes. Their faith strengthens, strengthens my faith, and it helps me to to see the the good in the world. The you know the positive part of it. It's there's so many negative things that when you see all these good people doing good things, it really is is a positive aspect for me in my life. When I've gotten a chance to travel with you in Malawi and see you. Uh, interacting with people in Malawi, and I had a chance to see you interacting with folks in Jefferson City uh, with Habitat, and it just seems to me that there's sort of a, uh, a light shines through you when you're doing this kind of work. Can you put your finger at all on what that light is? I mean, you just seem to light up when you're doing Habitat. Yeah, I, I enjoy everything I do because it, it's it's so it's so easy, it's so fun to work with people and to and to be with them. Children, no matter what their background, no matter what their home situation, financial situation is, all children are God's children and they are all willing to listen and if they're given the right environment, they're all interested in learning and learn to thrive in that kind of environment. I can only, I can teach him what I can at home and he can get, he can retain what he you know, can, but once somebody else t teaches him a certain way or a different way, that, that maybe gets through to him better. And so that'll help him in his foundation, so that way he has something to lean on as he grows up and grows older. Starting preschool, was, it was rough for me because she was the baby. I had to let her go. Um, but it's helped with her learning because she wanted to be up on her mom all the time. And... Um, that gave us both an experience of the separation. So, it has helped and it's taught her a whole lot. I've been touched by God through this congregation a lot. Um, in the fall of 2012, I got really sick and I kept getting sick for almost 18 months. Um, my stomach wasn't working, my legs weren't working, nothing about my body was working, really. But this congregation just came around and supported me. They supported my parents when they were having bad days. They visited me. They sent touching cards and hilarious cards that made the worst days better. And they just really showed me the love of Christ through their actions. Um, when I couldn't stand the smell of food in our house because for whatever reason they would bring my parents meals already prepared. Um, when my parents needed to go do something and I needed someone to sit with me at the hospital, someone would come. Um, and that to me means more than all the doctors who couldn't really do anything for me anyway. Um, even when I thought my life was going to be in a hospital room until the end, I knew that I was loved not only by this congregation, but by Jesus Christ. And that feeling means more than anything else in the world to me. I've seen Christ not only through the love of the congregation and the, the support from everyone here, and, and, and especially from the the team of pastors we have who were uh, kind of relentless in their support. They were there, uh, it seems like, at every twist and turn. And I was especially privileged uh, to see God touch us all uh, one night in November as Kellen's condition was worsening and worsening. And many of the doctors had given up hope. Some of them had encouraged us to make our peace and get comfortable. Uh, one night in November, uh, God's presence came over Kellen's hospital room while she slept. And I can't really describe that the power and the stillness of what, of, of what came over that room. It's like nothing I've ever experienced. Uh, short, a few hours after that stillness 
came over her room, she woke up and she said, I'm not sick anymore. Uh, I was disbelieving, uh, in shock. Uh, she, later that night, she actually got out of bed and took a few faltering steps. She hadn't walked for six or eight months. Uh, the next morning, uh, when the doctors rushed in to see what was going on, the doctor was flabbergasted, uh, speechless. Uh, the doctor attributed what had happened, the fact that her body appeared to be disease-free, was disease-free, to divine intervention. She said there was no medical or scientific explanation for what had happened and what was continuing to happen. Uh, based on the medications they were, had her on in attempting to improve her condition, uh, the doctor said she shouldn't be able to walk for roughly three to six months. But later that day, she was getting around the hospital with the aid of a walker uh, under her own power. So clearly, uh, not only were we touched by the love and support um, the folks here at First Presbyterian Church, but those prayers uh, were in the, in the final uh, analysis what made the difference. There's so much energy here to do more and to keep growing and to keep exploring what God is calling us to do. As soon as you walk in, you are part of the family and you are loved as God desires us to be loved and that's what I love most about this church.